The experience of pain should leave you stronger and more resilient than you otherwise could be without it. But if this were true, then why are so many people so afraid of pain? I mean, in my experience, most people avoid pain as if it were, well, painful. Well, the key lies in how you choose to view pain. Do you see pain as this huge monster that you must try to avoid at all costs? Or do you see pain as an inevitable fact of life? Something that you should not even try to avoid, something that you cannot avoid, so you embrace it. You choose to view pain in all its forms as a coach, as the coach that will guide you to being stronger throughout your life. Most mornings upon waking, my first thought tends to be the same eight word phrase. And that is, this could be my last day on earth. And one day I'll be right. One day I'll wake up and I'll say, this could be my last day on earth. And in fact, it will be my last day on earth. I never know if someone will smash into my car on the way to work, or I could be struck down by some horrible disease. Any of a number of things could happen to me and also to you because we are all mortal. We don't know when that day is going to happen, but that day is coming. So to ignore it or to, um, to fear it, those two things don't make any logical sense. The most logical philosophy is to embrace it. The fact that our days are numbered should not be depressing. It should be inspiring. It inspires me to make the most of today because I don't know if today is my last day. So I make the most of my days to make the greatest impact that I can for myself and for those with whom I have relations with. In every relationship, one or the other of us will not be around sometime very soon. One of us will die. So my philosophy, make the most of your relationships today. Death is unavoidable, but it doesn't need to be fearful. Death is what makes life so uniquely special. So let's make the most of each and every day, shall we? Now, the same philosophy applies to pain. Pain, like death, is unavoidable. You are going to have pain. So why fear it? Why not embrace it? Now, if you're honest with yourself, I bet that you do in fact fear pain. Now, I'm not blaming you for this. I firmly and thoroughly blame the man for this because the man has taught you that if something hurts, you shouldn't use it. In my experience, if a person is feeling pain somewhere, for example, in the shoulder, that pain is an indicator to immediately stop using and moving that shoulder. Why? Well, because the man tells us to stop using a body part when it feels painful. But what if he's wrong? What if, instead of a stop sign, Pain is actually a men at work sign. In this case, pain would be an indicator to move with caution, but move nonetheless. A significant hurdle to injury recovery is the reluctance to move a body part because of the fear of pain. Let's be clear about this. Pain is unavoidable. You will experience pain in your life. Pain, like death, happens to us all. So why fear it? Why not reframe the idea of pain and use it to your advantage? This is where my paradigm of mindfulness, movement, and massage comes in.
remember, in my point of view, pain comes in two broad categories. The first is the kind of pain you feel when you step on a nail. You clearly should not push through this type of pain as you would only make the situation worse. Fortunately, this type of pain is rare. The other and more common type of pain is the type of pain that you can and should push through. Fortunately, it is very, very common. You should push through this type of pain because waste removal, increased blood flow, and reestablishing movement mechanics are the primary goals when you're trying to recover from any injury. As long as you move non-ballistically, you can and should move as strongly as possible through a full range of motion. And this is a huge key, as the following illustration should help. If your car breaks down on the road, you can say as a matter of fact that your car is broken down. Now, let's assume you have engine damage, and in this analogy, the engine damage represents your injured shoulder. And you call to have your car towed to a mechanic shop. And let's further assume that these are expert mechanics. The mechanics represent your immune system. In fact, let's assume that they are so good that they not only have the capability to repair your engine, but they can make it better and more powerful than it was before it broke down. Now, if you follow the man's advice and avoid using your shoulder, then you will severely limit the ability of your mechanics to do their job. And your car will likely sit in the mechanics shop with just one or two workers. And it will take forever to repair, if it ever does, because your guys are overworked. However, if you have faith in your mechanics, i.e. your immune system, and adopt the paradigm of mindfulness, movement, and massage, then you will add more mechanics to the mix. The more you mindfully move through a full range of motion and massage your injury in spite of, nay, because of the pain, the more mechanics you bring into the fold. And each worker works in perfect harmony with all the other workers. I want you to remember this paradigm of mindfulness, movement, and massage. By practicing mindfulness, you will become more aware of your body. So, when you feel pain, the first pertinent question is, did I just step on a nail? And the answer is most likely no. And to be clear, I have seen very few conditions which should not be handled with this protocol. And I'm talking about everything from broken bones to torn tissue, grade one, grade two, grade three tears. It doesn't matter. If you mindfully move and massage these conditions on a regular basis, you will be stronger as a result of your injury. So now let me recap. Ah, that's better. Now I'd like to summarize for you the benefits of adopting my paradigm of mindfulness, movement, and massage. First, it will make you more aware of your body. The more awareness you have, the more control you can gain. Next, it teaches you how to be more courageous. If you practice mindfully moving and massaging your injured body part, you begin to fear pain less because you learn how to endure great pain in order to assist the healing process. And this in turn teaches you how to have less fear in general. Next, mindfully moving and massaging an injury speeds up recovery by increasing blood flow and waste removal. And finally, Mindfully moving and massaging an injury will make you more superhuman. Literally, every time you break a bone or tear a muscle, 
your body has the potential to rebuild the injured body part and make it superior to what it was prior to the injury. Well, mechaniacs, we've reached the end of this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and found the information to be very helpful. I do want to let you, let you guys know that you can also find us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. So please do take a moment to visit us there and get great information from The Body Mechanic. Now, as always, if you enjoyed it, please do forward this to your friends. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate that. Until next time, thank you for watching and thank you for supporting me. Kung Fu Salute, right fist, left palm, bring them together and bow. Thank you very much.